focusing on raining down a torrent of high explosive bombardments on terminid scum and anti-democratic automatons is not only an extremely satisfying way to play but also an excellent approach to take when working in any squad composition in Helldivers 2. If you're looking for a lethal horde clearing powerhouse with a very large ammo pool then this is the build for you. Face Shifter here and thank you for checking out my Death Captain Assault build. In today's video we're breaking down what is in my opinion one of the best horde clearing setups that has a specialism in providing your squad with superb support when overwhelming odds become stacked against you. We'll be going over the weapon options, passive choices, stratagem combinations, and a general rundown of how to play your role effectively. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. Your role with this build is very simple. Neutralize any threats that are killable with your weaponry as quickly and efficiently as possible, preferably before they come into range to cause any serious issues. This is much more straightforward when dealing with Terminids, but it's also a highly viable approach against automatons. Now, the mindset with this build should not be to get as many kills as possible. That will get you into more scrapes than is needed. And if you've been diving at eight and nine, then you will know that this is not desirable in the slightest. Instead, you should be seeking to protect your team and create space for them to do what they need to do. Getting railgun shots in, throwing stratagems in precisely, getting a spear to actually lock on for a change, securing samples and objectives, pushing stalker nests, removing automaton for Notifications. You get the picture here, folks. This means, though, that you should be on high alert and act as a scout of sorts. You need to be confident in your communication and ensure that your team are kept safe and on the task in hand. Calling where patrols are and which direction they are heading in and which direction you and your squad should therefore be heading in is paramount if you're wanting to get missions done as efficiently as possible. Primary source of damage is the trusty grenade launcher, an absolute powerhouse when it comes to dealing with packs and waves of enemies. Once a threat is identified, a quick decision needs to be made when playing this role. Do you throw down your Eagle Cluster Strike? Do you deal with the group with your main weapon selection? There'll be three choices here, folks. More on that in a moment. Or do you rain hell down on your enemies with the grenade launcher? Your decision here will likely be swayed by two factors. The volume of the enemies in relation to the composition within the pack. An example of this might be if I see a group of Terminids which has numerous bile spewers in there, I am absolutely emptying my grenade launcher in and around the area because these are high priority targets that can end a mission and soak up considerable damage from regular firearms and even stratagems in some instances. You can very effectively snipe groups of these enemies with the grenade launcher. So, with that in mind, encourage your teammates to call out these enemies on site. The same rule applies here for groups of automaton berserkers, devastators, etc. If you've come across those much, you'll know they can also really end you with their rockets. Whilst combining stratagems and the grenade launcher is a surefire way of removing threats, you may decide that you want to deal with enemies with your primary weapon. And this is where an element of choice comes into play and leads us nicely onto our weapon choices. So don't think there'll be too many surprises here, but I am going to just talk a little bit about each choice and weigh up the positives and the negatives so you can make an informed decision. First up is the Plaz Scorcher. This thing is absolutely bonkers and does some serious heavy lifting. It's an energy-based rifle that fires a bolt of gas that explodes on impact. It can penetrate light armor and deals explosive damage. As far as I'm aware, explosive weapons do 100% damage to weak spots, which makes them quite attractive in that sense. When firing at stripped armor on Bile Titans or Chargers, this weapon will do good work and can rip through Terminid mobs quite comfortably. However, all that being said, this weapon's ammo capacity sucks and makes it quite frustrating to use when dealing with packs of advancing enemies that are dangerously close. Inevitably, you will find yourself in a pinch, and unfortunately, this weapon is not the most efficient efficient when you run out of your grenades and you have to switch weapon quickly. I feel like this is a much more effective weapon against automatons. It two shots walkers when you hit the front armor panel. You can rip through berserkers, you can even kill tanks and hulks if you hit the weak spots and you generally do quite well in comparison here. This is a good choice if you don't mind getting into tricky situations and trying to do hit and runs on armored targets alongside your usual hull clear duties and I do play this weapon from time to time. I think it can be quite fun and it's a nice change of pace but i don't actually think in terms of this setup it is the best choice but certainly one to keep in mind if you're feeling a little bit put out you can't deal with armored enemies folks speaking of hall clear duties if you want to hone in on this aspect of build even more it will come as no surprise here that i'm recommending the infamous breaker shotgun this thing needs no introduction it absolutely rips
rips through groups of advancing enemies and even though it's a shotgun its range is excellent it sometimes feels a bit like an assault rifle if i'm honest this weapon feels much better when you switch to it in an overwhelming situation and let rip with it so completely the opposite to the scorcher in that regard it's much more successful if you get into a pinch and you need to remove impending threats after your grenades have run out it has superior raw damage output and a very tight pellet spread when compared to its fiery counterpart the incendiary breaker by the way this is also an option but i just feel that the regular breaker is much more effective here this does of course dictate the way in which you need to play this build you will be much more up close and personal and i find this actually quite an exciting way to play the build you're managing from the front line here a lot more and i feel like once they fix the armor issues that we're dealing with at the moment running this type of approach with heavy armor will be very fruitful indeed the breaker is a fine choice of primary weapon another fine choice would be if you could drop the channel a subscribe it really helps me out and will ensure that you stay up to speed with the latest helldivers 2 news and other related content thank you finally and this is admittedly my favorite the jar 5 dominator this does explosive damage and penetrates medium armor with ease like the scorcher it deals with weak spots very effectively and i found that coupling this build with this weapon and a teammate that is stripping charger armor with the rail gun is a very effective combination for this gun to come into its own it really needs to be played like a marksman rifle aim down sight keep your distance and place your shots carefully do not spam it from the hip this feels atrocious this weapon closely mimics the bolter from 40k and it's no wonder it's such a fan favorite for that reason it can one tap a lot of lesser enemies and at 200 damage per shot it actually does formidable damage across the board this is the opposite of the breaker in terms of the play style it dictates it excels at medium to long range and i actually prefer this play style when in this role i like to position myself slightly further away from the other three party members and try to maintain a position where i'm likely going to see the engagements coming their way from a bit of a vantage point and that way i can lob grenades in from my grenade launcher and take the shots with the dominator and often clear up messes before they even happen this really does feel like you've got kind of the overarching view of the battlefield and it feels really cool to play this way in terms of sidearms i always opt for the revolver whilst it may not be the most popular choice i just find the stopping power of this thing perfect for when you're in a clutch situation this is a very flexible slot though folks choose what you like just in my experience again if i found myself in a pinch particularly if i'm using something like the scorcher and i'm about to get surrounded pull out the revolver pick your targets effectively take out a few mobs that can often swing the tide of battle grenades there are two choices here in my opinion either the impact grenade or the incendiary now i find that incendiary works best against bugs fire acts as a cc effect and lobbing one of these on a bug breach or a choke point is really helpful to clear them up swiftly and effectively i also like to throw these at my feet if i'm getting chased because i know once they've gone off that actually the bugs behind me are going to have slowed down that then allows you to turn pick some off throw a stratagem in whatever it might be impact grenades on the other hand very good against automatons clearing loads of walkers or other mobile enemies with ease great as for armors armor stats are currently not functioning correctly in the game as of me making this video so using light armor is a no-brainer for obvious reasons it's just really a case of considering which passive to take i personally take armor with the scout passive as this gives you the ability to place markers on the map and generate radar scans every two seconds it kind of pulses it also reduces the range at which enemies can detect you by 30 percent again this is really effective if you're trying to evade a group of enemy patrols i like to use the pinging system on the map to scout for enemies and relay information to my team to make calls on where to head this gives you kind of a leading role in how to approach combat situations and you kind of feel a bit like a point man you call when the engagements are going to happen and when they're not it's great servo assisted is also a great choice as it increases the throwing range by 30 percent so it allows you to get stratagems in even earlier just a little caveat here folks make sure you practice how to do those throws because it can catch you out when i first switched to this i was overthrowing constantly so maybe take it a bit steady on the difficulty levels if you're just switching to this passive folks now stratagems aside from the grenade launcher being locked in as the must pick stratagem for this build the other one that is a must pick is the supply pack this is obviously for the aforementioned reasons you chew through ammunition both grenades and your primary weapon and having one of these on your back makes the grenade launcher absolutely ridiculous you can spam shots into packs with the knowledge that you're always going to be able to reload and as your role is clearing danger you need to be in the best position to do so and that is of 
course, as much surplus ammo as possible. It is important to stress that whilst you can always, of course, provide ammo for your party members when they're in a pinch, this is not your job with this build. Typically, you need to keep these resupplies for yourself. So I would therefore recommend communicating to your party members that that's the approach you're taking and somebody else needs to take the supply pack along if you're going to take the approach of providing ammo for other team members. It's not a glorious job, but someone's got to do it, folks. These next slots are a little bit more flexible and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you must play the game in this way to succeed and this build won't work if you don't do this. We already know that Helldivers is quite a flexible game, but what follows are just what A, I've enjoyed using the most and B, what I've found the most success in my experience using it in tier 8 and tier 9 missions. There's four of us that play together regularly. We've experimented with different setups and what I'm communicating to you now is kind of what we've agreed as a collective feels the most effective. First up, the Eagle Cluster Strike. When this is fully upgraded with the correct hangar slots, you get five charges, lower cooldown. The strike gets some utterly devastating kill counts. It really is, in my opinion, an S tier choice of stratagem for this style of play. It can be used offensively, defensively, preemptively, and all in all, it can be superb at protecting you and your team from hell. Remember, this is the role of this build. The point is to create space. The point is to remove danger. It's not to go on killing sprees. It's to get the mission done and it's to enable, facilitate an environment for your team to do the jobs that they have correctly. Nothing is more stressful in this game than when your party members with heavy weaponry loadouts cannot get their shots off on bio titans, on tanks, on all those sorts of things. You are in charge of making sure that people can do their roles effectively. They in turn do their role effectively to protect you. It's a symbiotic relationship, folks. You can, of course, choose other stratagems if you feel that you're going to get more mileage out of them and you feel more comfortable with them. But again, after playing quite extensively in eights and nines with the same squad, this was the one that we settled on as being the best choice when I was playing this role. The final slot, however, is definitely much more of a choice that you will need to make personally, and that will have a much larger bearing on how you play your role. One of the most useful ones I have used is the Orbital EMS. You have call-ins around every 70 seconds, and because this is not an eagle, it can be called in together with your cluster. So, this allows for pinpoint lockdowns of large advances and can be absolutely key for a number of reasons. Making sure you land your clusters and nades, allowing party members to reposition or land their own stratagems, heavy weapons like we've just gone over, retreat, the list goes on. This is a truly epic choice. It's even more exceptional if someone else runs EMS mortar because then what you can do is effectively mop up what their mortar misses. Other choices here include orbital laser. This gives us the ability to contribute to killing heavier targets or rip through automaton positions, for example. I often opt to go orbital laser when I see that my party have chosen to go a bit more support CC heavy, so we've got less heavy firepower to handle those larger targets. It just gives us that little bit more reassurance when we're taking on a mission with lots of heavy targets. It's also really good when you're doing blitz missions against automatons. Taking out bases with this thing is super easy. You can actually just split up in different directions, throw lasers into bases, and then start walking towards the extract, and it just decimates buildings. Great. Orbital air burst also works well if you're looking to really double down on your hole clearing potential. If you've used this, you'll know yourself. You can get some wacky kill streaks as well. Just be really wary. If you've picked air burst and or cluster in any combination, it is imperative that you are well versed in how to place these stratagems and make sure you call them out directly to your teammates. If this means saying Z1 move towards me or run east, then so be it. If you're careless with these, you will kill your teammates and that is not ideal at all. If you're looking for an opportunity to experiment with different stratagems, this build offers you an excellent starting template. So with that in mind, check out this next video which covers how to use each eagle stratagem and is part of a series of videos that deep dive into each stratagem area. Take care of yourselves, keep having fun, and I'll see you in the next one.